Brand new in Excel, if you have a picture, you can right click it and you can choose copy, then click in a cell, go to the data tab and choose from picture, picture from clipboard. And look at that, it gives you the option of how you wanna do it. So if you go to review, then it asks you to zoom in on it and see if what it's guessed is correct, or you can edit it, you can say rank here, for example like that, country, region, total score. And then when you're done, you can press accept and then insert data. It says you are responsible, I click okay, and then it's done it there. Now, do have a look at the data as it says you are responsible for it, because it might not get it right, but that is so much faster than how I would have had to do it otherwise. Uh, I will say that this data is pretty good compared to some, because it's got clearly defined lines between cells and alternating colors as well. So my name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. And I love talking about the new stuff, like this feature that just got released. So we're going to go through how to do this efficiently, how to make sure that you are doing it effectively, as well as how to avoid typical errors that might happen, particularly errors that could happen around numbers, errors that could happen around dates, and maybe around text and misspelling like that as well. So let's go look at some other examples. So I am in the same spreadsheet as that, but let's get some lower down data. Now, what you might be tempted to do is right click and save image as, and then give it a name here, but I highly encourage you not to do that. Let me show you why. So this is the image. Now, if you get it like this, then the image is really tall and really small. So it's not going to do a very good job at deciphering the text. So although you can kind of say, get data from picture and from file and then navigate to the file, it's not going to do that good a job at getting this. But instead, the way that I always do it is much better like this, which is take a screenshot of part of your screen. Not many people know this. I think it's hugely, hugely valuable. Press Windows, Shift and S at the same time. We've gone to Morocco, so let's go below Morocco Then click and drag to get a screenshot of just a segment of your screen like that. This copies it to the clipboard, click there and choose from clipboard and then go through the process. You can also click on the cells to just review that. So if something stands out at you, yeah, like here, for example, I thought that one was okay. So I didn't need to click that. This one, it has left out because it's kind of cut it off from the end of the screenshot. So it does that sometimes, but I can edit it here by pressing accept. And here, the one for Serbia was 92. So I can type that in and accept. And this one is 56, press accept there as well. And then we're going to insert the data and one requires review, click on that, Italy, I'm okay with that. I could have just inserted it anyway. There we go, now we've got it like that. Make sure that the columns align, etc. That's really, really important for this. So this is Power BI on my right. And what's very, very typical in Power BI is that you want to play around with the data. But the only way you can do that by the standard method is to click on the three dots and then export table. It asks you where you wanna save it. And then you have to navigate to that manually through your file explorer and open the file. It doesn't even open it for you. It's quite long and tedious. But if you want to do it a faster way, you can just do Windows Shift S and I can just screenshot this whole thing. I can go here and data from picture and from clipboard. Notice how here I have it quite far together. I have two rows for CMRE and I have the numbers that appear here underneath. So Excel doesn't know that well how to do with it. It's put CM and REAP on two different rows, which is kind of technically true, to be honest. I'm going to insert the data. I'm not going to review it. I'm going to insert anyway. And look what it's done. So it's done this over two rows. It's done this over two rows. If you want to combine them together, you could use a function I love called equals text join, which will put a space in between them. So space, comma, and then true, and then select these two cells like that. So here I can then drag it across, and that way I get to see I'm reaping two words. You might want to also do trim function around it, which will get rid of any white spaces afterwards to avoid issues. So drag that across and then copy and then paste special and values. Now we can get rid of row number five. So delete that. To combine these ones, you probably don't want a space. So you could do equals this one and this one. That's a little bit faster. Uh, but this will then store as a text value. Notice how it aligns it to the left. That has happened here as well because these two are not possible to be numbers because of where the commas are. So I can select this like this and then I get it to showing there. But with these text values, there's a lot of limitations. So it's better to wrap the value function around it like this. And then it goes on the right, which means it puts it as a value. You could have also done it here. It equals value. Like that value function just converts text to that looks like a number to an actual number like that. So that's pretty good. And then copy it and then paste special. And then we're going to do values or values in number format, something like that. There we go. Now we've gotten rid of those, so I can delete this and I can delete this as well. Now let's go for the next trick. Well, what about from Excel to Excel? Here you'll see I don't have any grid lines, so it's a little bit challenging for Excel to be able to decipher where it's gone wrong. Oh, and here's another one, it's got a dot. So look out for the dots. In fact, let me undo a few steps, Control Z, 
and get these as to how they were. And let's say that I just am glancing at a huge data set. And I want to figure out what is not being stored as a number. This is a great trick. You can select your data set and you can go to the conditional formatting tab on the home menu and you can use highlight cell rules greater than. And we're just going to put a really, really high number like that. Now, why is it doing this? Because everything that is text is going to be in this, color, unless it's much, much, much bigger than that. We can change the color to yellow. And now we have it stored as text. Note how it picked out here that there's a dot instead of where a comma should be. I wish Excel would have gotten that right, but you can fix it. If you can see them very, very clearly this way. And these two are stores as text values as well. So let's, um, let's undo that. So I'm going to select it and clear rules from selected cells. And now I'm going to show you how it works from Excel to Excel. So the results might surprise you. And let's select it with Windows Shift S and draw around it. You can't copy and paste it. And then here I'm going to go to data and from picture, from clipboard. There you go. Note that it has combined these ones, so it thinks that these are merged cells. So let's say if I don't have any grid lines, it can do that kind of thing. So let's say that I'm over here and I go to page layout and I do view my grid lines. And I'm going to screenshot. And then I'm going to go to data from picture from clipboard. And it hasn't really worked. It hasn't got my grid lines in the right place for some of it. Look how it's combined these ones. So here's what you can do. You can paste it. And then here, we're going to make the lines a little bit darker by going to picture format and choosing corrections. So if I do kind of one of these ones, there you go, one of the ones that gets the lines really, really dark without affecting the rest. This one, if I now copy it and now I go to data and in a cell, I'm going to say from picture and from clipboard. Do you want to discard? Yes. There you go. Now it's done a little better. It split out these ones. It still hasn't got this one. Uh, but if you want to, what you can do to go even further is you can insert a shape and then a line and then hold down shift to draw your line vertically. And we're going to make this line just black and weight, make it a little bit thicker. And then if you hold down control and you click on multiple objects, you can copy and then you can paste as picture. And now you can copy this and then you can go to the data tab and then choose from picture. <laughs> so these are some other picture manipulation tricks you can do to get it to work much better. There you go. Now you can see it's done it correctly. All right, let's go for dates. So over here I have some data with some dates and notice that it uses month day year whereas my computer uses day month year. So a little bit of a problem there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Windows Shift S again. Can't stop saying that, can I? It's a slightly different shortcut on a Mac but you do have this feature on a Mac. But let me show you which version you can get this from in a second as well. So insert from picture from clipboard. There you go. It doesn't know exactly what to do. Sometimes it's put underscores. Sometimes it's put, I don't even know what that character is. <laughs> let me just uh, click on that and change it. I'm really curious what that is. So you can change it manually like this if you want to, but we're not going to change all of them. I'm going to insert data. And then I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to do in the data tab, I'm going to choose text to columns. I love this feature. I don't actually want to split it. So I'm going to not do the text to column stuff. Just press next two times. Um, sometimes it'll accidentally tick one of these, make sure they're unticked, but usually it shouldn't matter. And then we're just going to say, the data source is MDY month day year. I'm going to put finish and there you go. It's done it for almost all of them except for this, but this was 0124. So it's O as in the letter instead of the other way around. And you do need to check and manipulate it. Note that you can still do that trick all the time of conditional formatting. And that will show you that the dates still showing you correctly. But if I do a really high number, then the dates will show me fine, but the numbers, the text will not. So this is a stored as text and it will identify that this is something you have to break and change. So to check whether you have this feature for Windows, if you go to file and then account, then you look at this. And if it says version 2211 or more recent, then you will have it. What does that mean? 22 means the year 2022 and 11 means the month, so November. In my case, I see 12, which is December. Because I'm on the beta channel, I get the, the, date, the features before they're released for the public. Whereas if you have 2211, then you'll have the November channel and you should have this feature on that. If you do see here semi-annual channel, then that means you'll probably see 2202, which means February 2022. And you won't have it at the time of making this video, but you should get it very, very soon. If you have Excel for Mac, then this feature has been available for a couple of years already, which is great. And if you don't have um, either of those, then you can use it on a mobile. This was available in Excel for mobile way before it was available on Windows and even Mac. So here I've got a little bit of an awful example where I've got kind of bad quality text and different colors, and this is not even Latin letters, it's Cambodian or Khmer text. So let's try it with this. So Windows Shift S and draw some pictures around it. So this is going to have some issues. It only works with Latin characters, so it's trying to guess what's going on and not doing that successfully. 
And I'm going to do insert data and 59 items, but I'm going to do insert anyway. So what I would recommend is don't do it with headers in these kind of scenarios where you've got lots of merged cells and sub things. Just type these in yourself. It will just really, really help you with it. It could still get some things right and some things wrong, like this one is wrong, for example. But what you can do, though, is you can select your data. And I love this trick. You can go to the Home tab and choose Conditional Formatting and Highlight Cell Rules and Greater Than. And if you choose a really, really, really big number like that, then press OK. What this is doing is it's actually highlighting everything that's not a number that's stored as text because highlight greater than will do it alphabetically. So in the alphabet, numbers come before text. So if it's greater than a very big number, it will show it to you like this. And then look at it side by side, or you can go back and check it later on if you need to. But a lot of the time here, it's just from a space or from a dot instead of something else. Uh, here, it might be two things. So it doesn't work perfectly, but often it can save you quite a lot of time there. This can show you a dot instead of something else. You can use other conditional formattings to pick that up. And then check it to the source as well uh, by putting them side by side if you need to do that as well. So Windows button and right key or Windows button and left key can view things side by side really quite easily and quite nicely. Uh, there is another website that's called extracttable.com that allows you to convert from images much, much better and more sophisticated than that. So I have another video where I talk about that and I also talk about how to get from PDF into Excel. This is another newish feature, get data from file from PDF. So I talk about that in my other video, but I really, really like this feature when you just want to get a small component of something. And you can screenshot part of a PDF as well, if that's what you're looking for. Great. So if you like this video, then my name is David and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you like this kind of video. Thanks for watching.